whether Paul was in or out of his body. When his spirit was escorted by angels, we also do not know. What is certain is that when going to paradise, just like Lazarus, whose body had died, was escorted to paradise, he was taken by angels. The word paradise may originate from Persian. The Persian word paradise is similar or related to the Hebrew word pards, which means a garden, a forest, or a kind of orchard. It's a place where a king or ruler would go to relax and separate themselves from everyday problems. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man, whether in the body, or out of the body. I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up or palsy into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter, to Corinthians 12 to 4. It's clear that the person in Christ, that he's talking about is himself. Regarding this, we can note the honor given to Apostle Paul for being suddenly elevated to the third heaven. The exact timing of this event is uncertain. Whether it happened during the three days when he experienced blindness at his conversion, or sometime after. The key here is the word caught up Greek, harpazi, the clues regarding paradise or the heaven in sacred texts, involve being taken up. There is no record of paradise being a place adjacent to hell. Such ideas came from legends, and religion later portrayed paradise as highly sensational. We can't claim to know how this happened, whether it involved the separation of the soul from the body or an extraordinary transfer. While deeply immersed in contemplation, it's a proud attitude to try to determine or investigate this especially since Apostle Paul himself said, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Nonetheless, this event is an extraordinary honor given to him. In an incomprehensible way, he was taken to the third heaven, the blessed realm far above the sky where God's glory is fully revealed. Apostle Paul doesn't mention what he saw in the third heaven or paradise. But he tells us that he heard words that are inexpressible and cannot be uttered by humans. We can only speculate about the language of angels and how much Paul knew about it compared to anyone on earth, whether Paul was in or out of his body. When his spirit was escorted by angels, we also do not know. What is certain is that when going to paradise, just like Lazarus, whose body had died, was escorted to paradise, he was taken by angels. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Luke 16, 22. Lazarus was a beggar, hungry, covered in sores. Ignored by the rich man and his sores were licked by dogs, but he had a name and his name was Lazarus. The name Lazarus is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Lazar, or Elias or my God is helper. Therefore, this beggar is a representation of everyone who will be saved, whose names are recorded in the Book of Life. His name also portrays him as a person of faith, because he makes God his helper. We only beg from the Lord, meaning that salvation is given by God's grace and mercy alone, not based on any deeds we do. In all of this, the beggar still holds onto faith and places his hope in God, making himself Lazarus, a person who places his hope and faith in God. In his persistence in faith, this is why the Holy Scripture states, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. This faithful person dies and his spirit departs from his body. To be with Christ Philippians 1.23
and being with Christ is depicted as being in Abraham's bosom in Luke 16:22. However, being with Christ is an action of go in or making a journey. From the physical realm to the spiritual realm, not an automatic merging with Christ. Therefore, Lazarus was carried by the angels. Why were angels needed to carry him and he couldn't go by himself? Because it is said in the Holy Scripture that they all, the angels are ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation, Hebrews 1.14. This means that the angel's involvement with Lazarus' spirit aims to serve his salvation, ensuring that he arrives safely at his destination. Most likely, this is related to the spirit's journey through the realm of space, so that it is not disturbed or hindered by evil spirits under the command of the devil, who may accuse sins that, although forgiven in Christ during the spirit's lifetime, are still brought up by these evil spirits? This is a form of partial judgment, as we can see from Hebrews 9.27 concerning the accusations and charges of evil spirits when the deceased spirit passes through. This realm of space, the Eastern Church Fathers described it as passing through. Tollgates because each spirit is responsible for inciting various human lusts to sin and will accuse the spirit of the sins it committed during its life. This is where the angel's function comes into play. Defending the departing spirit from the accusations of evil spirits at the barriers. In the realm of space, they rebuke these evil spirits. Similar to how Michael defended Gabriel against evil spirits under the command of the devil. Daniel 10? Ensuring that the faithful spirit reaches its destination safely. Because it is carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Thus, the spirit arrives at its destination, it goes, which means making a journey and abides with Christ or is in Abraham's bosom, because the goal of unity with Christ is to partake of the divine nature to Peter 1-4. Those who die in Christ do not really die but live even though they die, John 11:25, because they have moved from death to life. By uniting with the divinity of Christ manifested through his resurrection, John 5, 24. And those who live, even though they die now, form a holy community as the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and also make up the assembly of the firstborn names registered in heaven, Hebrews 12, 23, in the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, which is none other than paradise. Paradise is the waiting place for all the saved spirits, where they rest from all their toil and suffering in the world. As stated, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labor. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works to follow them, Revelation 14.13.